Well, today we look at uh, an event number eight in AD 29, uh, the very last part of AD 29 when Jesus is in the Jerusalem area. And from here forward, Jesus is under extreme pressure. Uh, they're constantly trying to trip him up and they'll drive him all the way to the cross. And so here we find, as we open up in event eight, a lawyer, a person that's experienced in the law, the religious law, not the civil law, asked Jesus a question, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Well, of course, we all know that there's nothing we can do to inherit eternal life. Uh, but nevertheless, that was the question that he posed to Jesus. And Jesus answered a question with a question, as he often did. And we probably could learn from that when we are confronted with those that are just looking to try to trip us up. He says, what's written in law? How does it read to you? And the lawyer, uh, wanting to be uh, the learned man that he is, says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your strength, and your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Now, he was quoting from Leviticus 19.18, Deuteronomy 6.5. And Jesus said, you answered correctly. Do this, and you will live. You say, but pastor, I thought that you couldn't get into heaven by works. <laughs> No, Jesus was being just as crafty as this lawyer was being crafty. Nobody can love the God, the Lord, the God, all with all of their heart and all of their soul and all of their strength and all of their might and mind and their neighbor as themselves. Nobody can do that. We can't be perfect. Only Jesus could do that. And if a man could do that, then obviously he'd have to be Jesus. Do this and you'll live. And so the lawyer wanting to justify himself says, who is my neighbor? Jesus didn't answer the question once again, but rather told a parable. He said a certain man was coming down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Fell among robbers. He was stripped, he was beaten, and he was left half dead. And along came by chance a priest who saw him, that is the man that had been beaten and left for dead, but passed by on the other side. And then came another man, a Levite. And the Levite saw him, but passed by the other side. And then finally it says that a Samaritan came. Now, you understand that Samaritans were hated by the Jews. This lawyer had no use for Samaritans. A priest, yes. A Levite, absolutely. But a Samaritan, no. Anyway, a Samaritan came along and he saw, but he felt compassion. He bandaged and he treated with oil and wine. He put him on his own beast of burden, brought him to an inn. He gave him more care there and gave to the innkeeper two denarii, two days wages, probably enough to cover the time that this traveler would be gone. And he said, if there's any more that you spend, I'll reimburse you every penny when I can return. Now, Jesus asked this lawyer a question, which of these three do you think proved to be the neighbor of the man that was robbed? <laughs> the lawyer had no choice but to say the third. Notice he, he didn't say the Samaritan. He didn't even want to speak the word Samaritan. But he said the third, the Samaritan. Jesus says, go and do the same. What about you? Are you a good Samaritan? Do you truly, truly love your neighbor as yourself? And can you possibly love the Lord your God with all of your heart and your soul and your strength and your mind and your neighbor as yourself? No, you can't. 
you can't get to heaven by works. You can only get to heaven by grace and faith and repentance of sin. This lawyer was tripped up in his own legalism. Organized religion, rules and regulations will not get you into heaven, nor will works. Nor can you limit who your neighbor is. It's very important for us to try to live as the one here in the story, the Good Samaritan. But if we're counting on that to get into heaven, it'll never get us there. We have to accept Jesus as our Savior, repent of our sins, make him Lord of our lives. And that's my thought for the day. God bless you. Have a great day.